Hello, so this exercise is one on um, cross tabulation where we're going to produce a table of frequencies uh, that is counting individual observations uh, as they meet specific criteria. So our, our question here is asking us to produce a cross tabulation on the variables of experience uh, and salary. So we can actually just go ahead and ignore completely this information on profession. Uh, all we need to, to concern ourselves with is experience and salary level. So I've, in, in, in an attempt to speed things up here, I've gone ahead and produced a, a table. Uh, and just, just a couple of little points that I want to make about the table because I don't want you to overlook the importance of these uh, if you're producing uh, this on your own. One is that the type of data doesn't really matter. Uh, here we have uh, categorical data, really it's ordinal data, it's got a ranking there. So I've got ordinal data and I have uh, quantitative data. So when we're producing cross tabulations, we can mix and match different types of data. They're, they're, that, that really doesn't matter. Uh, however, because I have quantitative data, specifically I have ratio data, uh, I've had to define a set of classes uh, very similar to what uh, is done when producing a histogram, which you may have seen this, where we need to take uh, our, our range of data. So for example, I have the highest value is 96,000, lowest value is 29,000. So that's the, the total range of my data. Uh, and now I've divided that up into different categories or different classes. Sometimes textbook calls it different bins. Sometimes I've called it a different bucket. It goes by different names. And so I've sort of stretched it out. Instead of 29 to 96, I've gone with a minimum of 26, maximum of 100. And I just very unscientifically decided four classes seems like a, a reasonable amount. And so th that way I've got four classes, each of roughly 20 uh, uh, units, 20 integers each. So 20 to 39, 49, uh, 40 to 59, and so on. A really important point that I want to make, I don't want you to overlook the importance of this, is that I've defined uh, the units here. So this isn't 20 to $39. Uh, this is 20,000 to $39,000. Uh, and it's absolutely imperative that you include any scaling or any units that you're that you're using uh, in your table. Okay, so once we've got that out of the way, uh, now we can just go ahead and count uh, our observations as they satisfy these two different sets of criteria. So let's start off. Uh, we'll look at low experience first. So in this data set, I really can isolate each individual. Uh, category one at a time. So here we'll first look at low experience. We can for now ignore everything else uh, and just look at low experience and start off counting within those with low experience how many are earning between 20, uh, 20,000 and 39,000 dollars. So I can just go through and uh, I'm just going to scratch them off so I can keep count of it. So there's one, two, three, four. So I have four observations within those of low experience that are earning between twenty and thirty-nine thousand dollars. Moving along to the forty to fifty-nine thousand dollars. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And finally sixty to seventy-nine. Looks like just one. And so this is zero left over here. And so my my row total is 12. So these are, let me just put in brackets here, these are the row totals as opposed to these totals down here, these are the column. Oops, if I can only spell properly. These are the column totals. Okay, so here we've got the number of observations or the number of individuals with low experience that fall into each of these salary groups. Okay. So now we can go ahead and do the same exercise, except now just isolate medium experience. So again, those at the low end, 20 to 39,000. Uh, if I scan through, it looks like there's zero, 40 to 59, 
one, two, three, four, five, six. 60 to 79, one, two, three, four, five, and six. And that's none left over here. Row total is 12. So now among those with medium levels of experience, six of them are earning between 40 and 59, six of them are earning between 60 and 79. Let's finish up then for the high levels of experience. Uh, so now I'm looking at this last column. How many are not earning as much? I wouldn't think many at all. Zero, 40 to 59. Uh, let's see, just the one. 40 to 59, yeah, it looks like just the one observation. 60 to 79, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And 80 to 100, one, two, three. And so once again, we have 12 observations. Now we can put together our total, uh, our column totals. So this is now how many, regardless of experience, how many individuals uh, fall into each of these income groups. So four are in the low income group. Here I have uh, 14, 15, three, and this is my grand total. 36 observations in total. So now I've got my cross tabulation or my table that includes frequency information uh, for my observations within this data set along these two variables. So in this case, we actually have the ability to see uh, a bit of a relationship between our, our two variables, between experience and salary, because it looks like all of my observations sort of fall into this bit of a trend. Those with low experience tend to be uh, concentrated on the lower income brackets. Those with higher levels of experience tend to be concentrated uh, among the higher income brackets. So not really anything surprising there, but it's interesting to see that with this cross tabulation, that extra bit of information uh, is available. So we can see a little bit about the relationship uh, between our two variables. Okay, uh, part B, now we're gonna get into uh, calculating row and column percentages. So I've gone ahead and uh, I've cheated a little bit. I've reproduced uh, the original table. So the one that we just spent all that time doing here, it's uh, already finished for us. And uh, because I need this information in order to fill in this next table, which uh, I'll do first uh, row percentages. Let me get my ink back here. So here we'll do row percentages and then I'll calculate a couple of column percentages. Now I'm not gonna fill this table in completely because that'll just take too long and you'll probably fall asleep before I get finished. So for the row percentages, let's just do uh, one or two rows. So let's, uh, let's pick this row here first. Now, the trick to doing the row percentages is uh, really just understanding how the calculations are done. The calculations aren't hard, but there's a lot of them and they're a little bit tedious. And so if you're working through it really fast, it can be really easy to make silly, silly mistakes. So when we're doing these row percentages, I'm taking each of these individual values or each of these individual frequencies and dividing them by the row total. So for the first one, this will be four, right? This four always divided by the row total. So this will be 12 and we'll do this in percentages so we can times it by 100. And so this is going to be 33%. So this is the value here in this first cell. So what does this mean? Well, we're looking at individuals with low levels of experience, 33% of my sample with low experience are earning between 20 and $39,000. So it gives us that distribution uh, or the, the, the percentage of how many individuals within that category uh, are earning that particular income level. So if I move across now, we can go to the next one, seven divided by 12. Uh, let me just get my calculator here. 
So 7 divided by 12, a little more than half, 58%. So here I have uh, times 100, so this is about 58%. So 58% of those with low experience are earning between 40 and $59,000. My next one is 1 divided by 12, so 8.3%. 8.3% here and that leaves nothing there's nobody earning 80 to 100 and that adds to 100% so now I can see the percentage of those individuals at that level of experience um, earning particular income level so let's just uh, go over this again if I look at this value here this means that out of all of my my sample size, all of, all of my sample, those individuals with low experience, 8.3% of them are earning between sixty and $79,000. 58% of them are earning between forty dollars and $59,000. 33% of them are earning between twenty dollars and $39,000. Okay, let's, uh, let's also look at the totals. Let's look at the very last row here as well. So now what this is going to be is regardless of experience level, what percentage of my sample is earning uh, an amount corresponding to each of these uh, income groups. So for the first one, here I have uh, four. Now my denominator is 36. So let me just clean this up. This value down here is going to be 4 divided by 36. I feel like I should know what that is. 4 divided by 36. 6, no, that's not right. 4 divided by 36. 11%. So times 100. This gives me 11%. So this means 11% of my sample, regardless of profession, uh, regardless of experience level, 11% of my samples earning between 20 and 39 thousand dollars. Moving on, the next one will be 14 divided by 36. So 14 divided by 36. Here I have, let's call it 39%. So 39% of my samples earning between 40 and 59 thousand dollars. The next one, 15 divided by 36, so 42%. And last but not least, those high income earners, 3 divided by 36, so 8.3%. are earning in the higher income bracket and that accounts for 100% of my sample. Okay, so here we've got now that distribution uh, across income, uh, income levels, uh, where we can now determine or we can now see what percentage of my sample is earning uh, an amount corresponding to each income group. So 8.3% are earning between 80 and 100, 42% are earning between 60 and 79, and, and so on. Okay, so that's it for row percentages. I don't think I need to fill in uh, everything, but as you can see, there's a lot of kind of tedious uh, calculations that need to be done, which means lots of room for error. Okay, let's, uh, I'm going to clean this up, and now we can do a couple of examples looking at uh, column percentages. So now, calculations are very similar. The interpretation is a little bit different. So again, let's start off here. So now I'm going to be using uh, as my numerator all of these values that correspond to that column. And now this is my denominator. So here I'm going to have, this one's fairly easy, four divided by 4. This is a percentage, so this first one's 100%. These are all going to be 0, 0, 100%. Well, that's uh, hardly interesting. So what this means is that 100% of my observations uh, are earning between 20 and 
Uh, oh, no, <laughs> sorry. Let me correct myself. That's not what it means at all. What this means is that within that income group, 20 to 39 thousand dollars, a hundred percent of them are low experience. Okay, let's do another one here just uh, just because I sort of messed that one up. So let's look at the, um, this group here, the 40 to 59 thousand dollars. So now we're going to have these values as my numerators divided by this my denominator. So here we'll go 7 divided by 14 times 100. So this one is 50%. So here's 50%. So what this means now, if I look at that income group, 40 to $59,000, 50% of my sample uh, in that income group are individuals with low experience. Moving on to the next one, 6 divided by 14 times 100. Let me go 6 divided by 14. Whoops. So 42, let's call it 43%. 43% and this must then be 7%. This would be 1 divided by 14. And this would add to 100%. Okay, so looking at that income group, 40 to 59,000, 50% of them are low experience, 43% of them are medium experience, and 7% of them are high experience. Okay, let's come over here now and do this. Uh, these totals. This will be fairly straightforward. These are my numerators, and this is my denominator. So it's fairly straightforward. They're all going to be 33%. So this now is just telling me that within my sample, 33% of them have low experience, 33% are medium, 33% are high experience. Okay, so there's uh, one example of cross tabulation using uh, two different variables, uh, one categorical, one quantitative. Hopefully, uh, hopefully it's a little bit easier. Sorry, I, I stumbled a little bit on the first uh, example, but hopefully it all uh, comes together. Okay, thanks for watching.